Sometimes the good guys win. Today's news segment brings you the latest stories of heroic police and savvy citizens who had a hand in rescuing people who were taken against their will. A dream came true for a little nine-year-old girl we are calling Jane in 2019. She was invited to stay with her grandmother in Palau, a gorgeous island country in the Western Pacific. Jane's father, Manfri Sasao, is from Palau and was excited about the opportunity for his daughter to get to know his mom. Jane's parents, Manfri and Chanel, were understandably worried about sending their young daughter so far away alone. But it also seemed like a once in a lifetime opportunity to learn a new language and explore her own culture. Eventually, they acquiesced and allowed Jane to travel from Washington to visit her grandmother in Palau. It was um, very uh, hard to say goodbye to her, but in my heart, I thought that it was gonna be a good idea. At first, everything was wonderful. Jane's calls home were full of fun stories about the beaches and her new relatives, her mom reported. She at one point was telling us she didn't want to come home until she was 18. When it was time for Jane to return home to Washington, COVID-19 hit. There were no planes to catch to bring her home. Jane's calls home took a turn at that point. She cried and begged to come home, too young to understand the rules and restrictions implemented because of the pandemic. Then suddenly, communication dropped completely. Jane was hardly ever able to come to the phone. Her parents were told she had misbehaved and was grounded from her devices or that the time difference was prohibiting the call. When Jane did come to the phone, her voice was flat and monotone and she had little to say. Jane's parents began to wonder if something was amiss when she made a phone call that left them without a doubt. In a small, quiet voice, Jane pleaded with her parents not to be mad at her grandma and auntie because she was the one who misbehaved. After that comment, Jane's parents were sure something horrible was happening to their daughter thousands of miles away at the hands of her own grandmother. Soon, they received news that Jane's grandmother had been arrested for her treatment of her granddaughter. A neighbor had seen something alarming and called the police. The next time Jane's parents saw her was on a Zoom call, her face was bruised and swollen. Jane told her parents that her grandmother and aunt would withhold sleep from her and lock her outside during storms as punishment. Jane's parents wanted their daughter home more than ever at that point. Still, the pandemic had flights grounded all over the world. After several months, Jane's uncle was able to fly into Guam. Palau has never had a COVID-19 case and stopped allowing flights into the country when the pandemic hit. Guam was as close as the uncle could get to Jane. She was supposed to meet him there, but her family in Palau never got her to the airport. Jane's parents were at a loss when someone suggested they call the FBI. Jane was an American citizen being held against her will in a foreign country. The FBI was their last chance and best hope of getting her home. Within 20 days, the FBI negotiated with the Palau government to have Jane escorted to an airport tarmac and into the hands of the U.S. military. After a year away, Jane was finally on her way home. Jane's father, Manfrey, has still not spoken to his family back in Palau. Tyree Sneed broke into his ex-girlfriend's Tampa, Florida home and held her and her roommate at gunpoint while he rifled through her purse and belongings, demanding money. Sneed then made his ex, who has not been named by the authorities, get into his car and drove her to his apartment, where he kept her for more than four hours before police found her. Officers were evacuating the building when Sneed opened the door and saw them. He immediately slammed the door shut. Police body cam footage shows them using a battering ram to knock the door down. Sneed was arrested at the scene and received several charges stemming from the incident and is still awaiting trial.
a locksmith became an unlikely hero in Utah in 2020. As he was changing the lock for a woman in Midway, Utah, the situation started to seem strange. A man was also in the home and he stayed very close to the woman at all times. When she needed to pay the locksmith using her phone, she had to ask the man for it. Even stranger, the woman surreptitiously showed him her palm with the number for emergency help written on it. He called the police as soon as he left the home. What no one knew was that the woman had expected trouble, and that's why she set up the locksmith appointment days earlier. Her ex-boyfriend, Grant Nielsen Egertson, who had already been arrested for stalking another woman, still had a key to her home. Just as she feared, Egertson used the key to come into her home the night before. He took her phone and had been holding her hostage in her home. She had tried sending emails for help, but to no avail. When police arrived and knocked on the door, the woman immediately answered and ran out the door. She told him that Egertson was downstairs. He was arrested and faced with multiple charges in the incident. Police in Lake City, Florida, received a call from a woman saying a man was in her home with a gun and he was trying to hurt her roommate. Police arrived to find the man Bobby John Simmons had taken the woman. Fortunately, she called her roommate while police were still on the scene and told her Simmons had her under his control, but she was able to escape. Police located her moments later. She told him that Simmons had taken her to a parked RV camper and ushered her inside. He told her he planned to make the police him to end his life. When he turned his back to her, she was able to escape. Police found Simmons still inside the camper and arrested him without incident. He faces a slew of charges related to the incident as well as previous theft charges. Connecticut State Police were on the lookout for Jose Claudio Diaz after Pennsylvania police notified them he was driving through in early May 2021. He was spotted driving northbound on Route 15 near Exit 46 in Fairfield, Connecticut, and state troopers pulled him over. Inside the car with Claudio Diaz was a woman he had taken against her will across state lines. She told police she met Claudio Diaz on a dating site. He showed up at her house one day saying he would kill her son if she didn't do as he told her. He drove her to a motel where he at her multiple times. The next day, he put her back in the car and told her they were going to Massachusetts where he had family nearby. Police arrested Claudio Diaz, and while behind bars, he tried to end his own life by wrapping a t-shirt tightly around his neck. Police wrestled it away from him, but he threw his head into the toilet in an attempt to himself. When he was once again restrained by the officers, he threatened and spat at them. The woman was taken to St. Vincent's Medical Center and is said to be safe and well. Claudio Diaz is being held on a $300,000 bond and faces multiple charges from the incident and attacking a police officer. These fortunate folks escaped an unknown fate, but many don't. Every 40 seconds, a child goes missing in the United States. As many as 1,500 of these cases are of citizens taken against their will. If you have information about a person taken against their will, call 1-800-THE-LOST to get help. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. Don't forget to like and subscribe for more news content daily.